Once again, I want to take this opportunity, brethren, to welcome you into this study of today, where we have been having a series of studies. Uh, now we are in study four about bread enough and to spare. Welcome in a special way, and may God bless us even as we partake of this time to study of His Word this very evening. Welcome. So, in tonight's study, we are going to uh, learn or get ourselves acquainted with the 12 principles to guide our giving. The 12 principles that are going to guide our giving. And our scripture portion is coming from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 to 15. I want us to take our time so that we go through these uh, uh, scripture so that we can uh, have the 12 principles that will always guide our giving. And so uh, the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 to 15, it says, Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in the great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their rebellity. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, enrolling us with much urgency that we could receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Verse 5 And now not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord, uh, so and then to us by the will of God. So we urged Titus that as he had begun, so he could complete this grace in you as well. But as you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in all love for us, see that you do abound in this grace also. I speak not only by commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor that you through his poverty might become rich and in this i give advice it is not to your it is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and what you were desiring to do a year ago but now you also must complete the doing of it that as there was readiness to desire it so there were also many to be a completion out of what you have for if there is first a willing mind it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what he does not have verse 13 for i do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened but by an inequality that now at this time your abundance may supply uh, their lack that their abundance may also supply your lack, that there may be equality, as it is written, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you in a special way this very night. As we study of your words on the 12 principles to guide our giving, want to pray that Lord remain still in us, that knowledge, that wisdom, and that understanding that Lord comes from above. Guide us in this night, for is our desire and prayer in Jesus' name. And so we begin uh, quickly to the first principle that will guide our giving. So the first principle, before we get to the first principle, uh, in uh, the book of 2 Corinthians, just as we have read, Paul is referring to the five graces, that is faith, speech, knowledge, 
earnestness and love and then he adds a sixth described as this grace of giving and so this passage is giving as a guide to our giving and so this subject must be studied and see what god has to say about stewardship so basically we are dealing about stewardship so his work today is often hindered through lack of funds all over the world people are enriched simply because many of god's people are undisciplined careless and selfish with regard to the privilege and responsibility of giving to the lord and so out of this context we are going to get the 12 principles that will always guide our giving and so quickly we begin with the first principle The first principle is that we must begin by giving ourselves to the Lord. Just as Paul has quoted it in the book, uh, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5. And so he says that the Macedonians gave generously, but they gave themselves first to the Lord. And so for us uh, to get the principle of giving, we must give ourselves to the Lord first, just like the Macedonians gave themselves first to the Lord and then they gave generously. Secondly, he says that in a sense, our gifts are not acceptable to God unless we are first given ourselves to him. Just as Solomon quotes it in the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, uh, verse 8, and Paul saying the same, same statements, in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and so friends we must begin by giving ourselves to the Lord first the second principle that we need to get or we need to have back in our minds that will always guide our giving is that our giving to God must be through human channels there is no other channels that we can give to God except through the human channels as he puts it in uh, verses 5 and so when Paul is writing let me just uh, quote the verse uh, chapter 8 verse uh, 5 he says that and not only as we had hoped but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us so we want to notice these words these uh, these words to us as they have been put in the Bible so we cannot literally place our gifts into his hand but we can give to his work and where our giving is through the church or directly to the church or directly to a mission agency then we do in fact place our gifts into the Lord's hands through human agencies and so the Macedonians gave to Paul and yet they were giving to God just as it is quoted in Matthew chapter 25 and verses 40 and so uh, our giving to God must be through the human channels the third principle that we need to have back in our minds is that our giving should be according to the will of God just as he puts it again in uh, verses 5 that we have just uh, finished reading and so he says that the implication is that we need to seek God's will concerning our giving have you ever seriously done this so it is a question that we should be pondering back in our minds and we also need to exercise discernment in our giving because we need to give to work that is a hundred percent true to God and his word there are priorities in giving we should by all means give or help give to help to alleviate human suffering and distress but as Christians there is a great deal of specific missionary work which should claim our first attention and believers 
support works of charity, but they do not support God's work. And so the third principle is that our giving should be according to the will of God. The fourth principle that will always guide our giving is that there is great joy in giving to the Lord, as just Paul has put it in verses 2. And so he says that surely we have proved this. See what the Lord Jesus said in Acts chapter 20 verse 35. And so in the same context of 2 Chronicles chapter 29 and verses 27, we are told that it was after the burnt offerings had been presented to the Lord, singing to the Lord began also. And so joy follows dedication and obedience. And so there is great joy in giving unto the Lord. The fifth principle that will always guide our giving is that our giving should involve some real sacrifice, still quoted in verses 2, where it is said that although the Macedonians gave generously, notice that they gave out of their poverty, reminding us of David's great statement in 2 Samuel chapter 24, 24 and verses 24, where he says that do we give at the point of sacrifice or only give our left offers? After we have met all our needs at once, we can compare that with the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 41 to 44. And so our giving should involve some real sacrifice. The sixth principle that will guide our giving is that we are to give willingly and ungrudgingly. Just as he puts it in uh, verses 3, where he says that we should notice the word of themselves. Of themselves. They were not pressed to give, but were cheerful givers. Out of the love of God and out of the love for God. And so we are to give willingly and ungrudgingly without any complaints. The seventh principle that should be running back in our minds is that our giving should be according to our means. Just as he puts it also in verses 3, where he says that they gave as much as they were able. Our giving should be proportionate. That is, according to the amount we receive. Just as verse 12 states that we are to give not out of what we have, but according to what we have. This is how God gives, not out of his riches, but according to his glorious riches, just as Paul puts it in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. The eighth principle that will guide our giving is that we are to give as a privilege and not merely as a duty. Just as it is put in verses 8, where he says that Christian giving is a duty. But the verse states that we are not under the law, but under the grace. And so that is something that we should be reminding ourselves of, that we are not under the law, but we are under grace. And so Paul could have made a very good cause for tithing for the minimum the Jew was required to give as the one-tenth of his income. And so should we, under grace, give less than the Jew was required to give under the law? And so if the Jews were required to give under the law, that you were uh, compressed to give one over ten uh, of your income, that was under the law. And so we, who are under the grace, should we give less than the Jew was required to give when he was under the law and so it means that we are to give as a privilege and not merely as a duty. And so the ninth principle that will guide our giving is that when we give, we prove the sincerity of our love. 
And so God has proved his great love to us, not simply by words, but by the gift of his own Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we prove our love to him in the same way by our own giving. And so when we give to God, we prove the sincerity of our love to God. The tenth principle is that when we give, we enjoy true Christian fellowship, just as Paul has put it in verses 4. What fellowship, what fellowship there is when we all unite to support God's work and to further his cause? You may have only a small amount to give, and I may have only a small amount to give, but if we both give consciently, and prayerfully, and if hundreds of others do the same, all our small amounts put together will make a lot. And so when we give, we enjoy true Christian fellowship. The other principle that will guide our giving is that our giving should be systematic and methodical. That is how he puts it in verses 11 and verses 12. The Lord does not want us to be undisciplined in our giving or do it haphazardly or in an haphazard way. We are to decide what proportion of our income we will give to him. Then we are to decide how the Lord will have us give, what the channel for our giving should be and which work we should support. So, we must make it a matter of a definite prayer. And by that fact, our giving should be systematic and methodical. Finally, the last principle that will guide our giving is that we have a great motive for giving unto the Lord, just as he puts it in verses 9. And so, what constraints what constrains us to give at all? It's a question. Surely, in view of verse 9, our hearts are deeply moved and our pockets are deeply touched. And so the measure of our appreciation of his gift to us will determine the desire, the measure, and the expression of our giving to him. And so, by that fact, we should look up, as he has put it in uh, chapter 5 verse 14 and 15. So out of those 12 principles, uh, we have been able to find the principles that will always guide our giving. And so our motive this evening or our prayer this evening is that we ask of the Lord to help us to be good stewards so that we can follow the 12 principles that we have been able to learn this evening. And out of the 12 principles, we can surely be good stewards. May the God bless us this evening in Jesus' name and your presenter has been Albert Manga. Welcome and may God bless you all.